Hi guys and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some beautiful watercolour snowflakes and I'm so excited because I've been really practicing this and I've come up with a lovely way where we just use one colour and we use the watery blend to create a beautiful sort of translucent icy feel. So grab your paints and let's get going. Hi guys, okay so today we are going to paint some snowflakes and I've already been painting a few and I've come up with various approaches for you. So I'm going to paint three snowflakes all using a single colour, just Prussian blue, this colour here, which means we can zoom in a little bit more today and get some of the detail on for you. So the first thing we need to do is to create a structure. Now I always find that any loose watercolour painting works best if it's got a good solid structure beneath it first. So that's my ethos with, with painting in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the last one and I've got a compass and I'm going to just draw in a circle. And then I've got a really clever bit of maths for you. Um, a snowflake is a six pointed uh, sort of star shape and the width of your compass also works out as a six pointed star for you. If you put your compass at the top of your circle and just mark with pencil and go around the edge making little marks this will give you the structure with which to create your diamonds oh, diamonds not really diamonds are they so the lines now Just going to draw, and these are going to just cross the centre. There we go. And the other thing I find very helpful is to actually give yourself a second smaller circle inside. So I've got my compass again, I'm going to make it even smaller. Find the centre again, and I'm just going to spin my page round, and there we go. So as I said, we're just using a single colour today, we're going to use Prussian blue, and we're going to use a single brush as well. So I've got my two tenths brush, and it's a nice and small brush, so if you don't have a two tenths, just make sure you've got something that's nice and small with a rounded point. Okay, so we are going to get started, and we're going to begin with a lovely loose snowflake. Right, I'm going to start with a rather loose and lyrical snowflake. I've got my Prussian blue and what I'm going to do first is to get a really, really big blob of wet paint in the middle to start off. When I say big, I mean more that it's just, there's a lot of wetness and there's a lot of colour in there. Okay, I clean my brush off and I'm really excited with this technique, I'm excited to show it to you. I was painting a lot last night to just come up with the best snowflake. So clean wet brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the colour out of that central line and I'm going to clean my brush off. And at the top I'm going to sort of do a little sort of loose sort of fan tulip shape. And then with my wet brush I'm going to just paint little fan shapes using the belly of the brush coming out from the side of this central line and I'm just using the colour 
that's flowing up from the channel from that blue and what it's doing is just flowing in to these little fans coming out the side there we go now this requires a fairly sort of fast work but I'm sure you can all manage that if you do find that everything is just drying up too quickly you can always clean your brush off get it wet and just run a little bit more water up the center but essentially what we're looking for is this beautiful graded blend and it's because there's so much color in the middle there uh, and it's just yeah really really gorgeous okay so clean wet brush I'm now gonna find the point down here at a third and I'm gonna repeat the process so let's just repeat that again so the the top fan comes just outside that circle these circles are so helpful for just making sure even though it's loose that the piece has a sense of symmetry so I'll pop a bit more water into this channel just to make sure we can get the lovely color blend I'm starting off with a with a snowflake like this because I found last night when I launched into my practice and tried to paint a really elaborate delicate little snowflake that I I got lost quite quickly and I I just really loved painting one that was just a bit more gentle to start off with and we've got the color flowing up now you'll find that as we start to paint this obviously things are going to dry up the color is going to run out as well so you can always just dab a little bit more color into that central blob there but you, what you don't want to be doing is adding color anywhere else okay last one clean wet brush and let's do the fan okay so I'll just finish this off and then we'll move on to the other prongs that's drying nicely now so we'll take a little bit more Prussian blue and we'll look at the other spikes coming out so let me just paint I'm going to paint a line with a bit more strong color here that comes almost all the way out and this time I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to paint three well they look a bit like leaves little sort of s-curve things And again I'm just using water on my brush to coax colour out of that central line and at the top a little diamond shape or I should say at the bottom really shouldn't I okay let's do these ones so the first shape coming out just wants to be just shy of the other other sort of snowflake prongs. I think the beauty and wonder from a snowflake comes when it just feels like everything magically fits together and nothing's touching. We'll just get coax that blue out of the end of the line there. Lovely. And as we said before, if we feel like the colour has all dried up, we can just wet it and pop a little bit more blue in just to give ourselves a bit more of a fighting chance. 
clean off the brush and repeat one more time. I think the best thing when you're painting snowflakes is to actually have a look at the incredible microscopic images of real snowflakes. They are absolutely breathtaking. And in a way, they're the best inspiration because it was there that I realized that a snowflake had six prongs and not eight for a start. Um, so yeah, it's amazing how what you think you know what one looks like. And there we go, that's our first icy little snowflake that I like to think is a more of a sort of slightly botanical one. Um, you can always sort of keep adding little bits and pieces, but just go easy. I think the best thing is to let it dry and then see later on if you want to add any more bits. So we can do that when we come back, but the next one we're going to move on to is a slightly more classic snowflake shape. So I'm gonna do the same technique where I start off with a really concentrated centre. So I really hope you enjoy how this technique works because I think it's really something quite special. Um, starting off with a blob of colour, really, I'm going back in a few times, really building up that blob. And now we are going to begin. So this one, clean wet brush, I'm going to do a straight line again. All the way to the end. And this time I'm going to use that circle as a bit of a guide for me. So I'm going to first just paint a little line and a little sort of triangular shape and two more little lines there. And then I'm going to use this as a guide as well for my first little V shape and then another one. And then I'm going to come outside of the edge of the circle and fill that in with a little diamond. Okay, clean off the brush, let's do it again. So this time I'm going to do the same shaping for each of these main prongs. So I'll just carry on with this. So I'm using the circle, midpoint circle. And then if you're struggling to sort of match up things, what I like to do is I sort of take my brush there and I guide it round to give me the uh, basic sort of coordinates. And then with these ones, using the circle edges is just so helpful. What I love with this is even though it feels like there is loads of colour in that one and not a lot in this one. It's all a sort of continual blend, so it feels like it all belongs together. Now, if we do run out of stuff, what we can do is add a little bit more in there for a start, clean off the brush, and you can just keep on adding colour to that central line, wetting off your brush and starting again. So I'll just finish off this one and then you can join me for the next stage. That first layer is all done. And now we're going to add in a second row of lines. Now I've not felt the need to draw these in in pencil. I hope that the guidelines I'm given by what I've painted already will be enough to give me a fairly decent line. So again, I'm just using the wetness, but we could always add in a bit more color there to just help us out. And I'm coming up to that inner circle there. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint a little V there. I'm going to pop in a little dash. I'm sort of trying to fill in the gaps. And then I like the idea of having a mini little set of snowflake spikes coming out there. So again, just using the water, there's so much colour there. And then we pull 
along it a little more. I feel like we have just enough guidelines that we don't we don't want to sort of bombard this with a load of pencil lines because it is a a delicate piece. And of course we can rub out the pencil when we're done. But it's always good to try and do it with as little pencil as possible. So we're just going to fill in all the rest of these gaps and then we'll come together for the last bit, see what else is needed to do. And here we are just at the last bit using the water It's probably quite difficult to see, but what is easy to see now is how these previous sections have all dried and are starting to crisp up. So that is a lovely sort of classic uh, snowflake shape where you've got your two circles drawn in and they're just going to be really helpful for placing all your little prongs and allowing them to all sit in there quite tightly and closely together but without m messing up and getting overlapped and the other thing there is you've still got this beautiful blend of Prussian blue which is sort of stretching out to certain elements and just making this snowflake look really icy and translucent. Okay so the next snowflake we're going to paint is again a little bit different. I wanted to paint one that had a bit more of a, a realistic feel to it because I think there's something absolutely incredible um, as I was saying about the real snowflakes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start slightly differently this time. Still with Prussian blue, I'm going to paint two thin parallel lines but with lots and lots of paint of the Prussian blue. I'm going to clean off my brush and now just using the water I'm going to start to draw the colour out in these funny little shapes, little shards of ice and I'm going to do a nice sort of tip on the end there and I'm just allowing the wetness to take the colour out of that central line and sometimes I'm sort of using the belly of the brush to make a slightly sort of thicker shape like that and we'll have a little delicate one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of trail off a little bit as we get towards the centre. I'm going to go back in and get some more Prussian blue and this time I'm going to come down and repeat these steps. So clean off the brush each time because there is just so much colour. And the, uh, the end can just sort of bobble out over the edge there of that circle. I just couldn't believe it when I looked online at the, the images of real snowflakes and how incredibly beautiful they are. And this is my sort of attempt with watercolour to come up with something that matches them. Okay, so I'm going to work my way all the way around the edge, uh, doing these double to parallel lines of quite concentrated wet colour and then just using clean wet brush to draw out these little icy shapes. Now we've painted a little plume on each one, we can now start to create the shape of it more. So what I'm going to do with each one is I'm just going to sort of extend the sort of midpoint prong to just come and meet that 
circle, that smaller circle. So at this point, I'm using a little bit more Prussian blue to just help me along. amazing about Prussian blue is how it seems to almost change colour depending on how much uh, water you put with it but it's looking absolutely gorgeous at the moment okay and now now we've sort of established our shape we can just start to fill in really the little ones so what I'm doing is I'm sort of choosing one little triangle here and then just filling in one by one so that they sit really nicely and beautifully placed and don't overlap with each other. And I'm just using a bit of dilute Prussian blue to do that. Anything left I like to do is just with a clean wet brush to just get a little bit of wetness going up sort of one or two of these, not all of them, I like having the white still showing but just to sort of get the light coming in and out. And there we go, there are three very different approaches to painting snowflakes. We're going to just let these dry fully and then we're going to rub out the pencil so you can see the finished result. And there we are, beautifully rubbed out, all the pencils gone, and suddenly we've got these gorgeous shapes. So we've got a nice loose colour blend one here, something a little bit more classic and precise there, and then one that is sort of a resembling a more realistic snowflake. And then what are you going to do with yours? Well, I find the fun thing with these, I've got a few more here that I've done recently and cut out. Um, they could make really beautiful little tree decorations or even gift tags maybe and uh, you can just do that with simple scissors and of course you can play around with the kind of shapes and designs um, one like this is just following the same simple structure of this with the straight lines and then you can just have fun with it so uh, I can't wait to see how you get on Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that you find good uses for your snowflakes, whether as gift tags or to hang on the tree. I think they're a really lovely addition to any festive celebration. So I wanna say thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with this painting. And subscribe and you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.